So this past week, the WWE issued their third quarter earnings for 2017, and you probably saw the different articles talking about the numbers from the uh, shareholders conference call with Vince McMahon and George Berrios and other top executives in the company. And the numbers on the surface look very, very good. So there may be those that look at those numbers and say, this is an indication that regardless of what you want to say about the booking or you want to say about this or say about that, the fact is you don't know what you're talking about because the earnings are really, really strong and the company's fiscal performance is very, very strong and the forecast for fourth quarter 2017 and heading into 2018 looks as strong, if not stronger. And I will say, when you look at some of the data the WWE has provided, there is no question that you can make a very, very strong argument, especially with the WWE being a few years into uh, their current television deal, knowing that the negotiation period for the next television deal, whatever might, that might bring, how much of an increase in revenue that might bring to the company is coming around the bend in 2018. But you look at some of these figures and net income up over $10 million versus third quarter 2016. An accurate financial comparison is go year over year or this quarter compared to previous year's same quarter. It gives you a really good basis of where the company has progressed over the past 12 months. It can give you some indication of where they're headed positively or negatively. Total operating income up over $15 million versus third quarter 2016. And this is profit, profit excuse me, from operations minus expenses Again, that looks like a really, really good number. And then you get into the adjusted OBDA, OIBDA, as I always screw up when I try to say it, but operating income before depreciation and amortization. The company was up almost $16 million versus same quarter 2016. And when you look at those numbers and you see the cash flow numbers the WWE is reporting over $22 million in free cash flow for third quarter 2017 compared to I believe it was just a little over a million dollars for same quarter 2016. You're saying that net income's up double digit millions, operating income's up even more, adjusted OIBDA is up even more. Um, you look at those numbers and it indicates a very, very strong performance and as the WWE is liking to tout, imagine that using the word tout, they're making sure that they emphasize that this is a record quarter, a record third quarter for the WWE, and they expect even more to come. So it does beg that question. Does the booking really matter? Do the half empty arenas at a lot of these shows, especially the house shows and even the television tapings, does that really matter? Uh, does the lack of big time stars matter? Does the writing matter? Does any of it matter? And if you didn't know any better, and if you took the WWE at its word, which is your first mistake, then the simple answer is, no, it doesn't matter. The company knows what they're doing, they're making money hand over fist, and as a result, you have nothing to criticize, you have nothing to complain about. And it sounds great in theory, and if you want to kind of live in that alternative facts bubble, then that's fine. But the real truth of the matter is these things do matter before you even get into the actual reports and earnings numbers just looking at it from the standpoint of as this company gets ready to go and begin potentially negotiating a new television deal sometime next year the fact that the year over year ratings are continuing to decrease even if they were in smaller num decrease numbers they are still decreases decreases the amount of additional revenue you can get from any type of long-term television deal. And while the WWE is still fundamentally overall in a good ratings position on cable television, kind of in that Fox News territory in terms of prime time, and let's be honest, in terms of cable television, we can mock them or not, depending on how you view the world, I guess. But the fact is, if you're banging neck and neck with Fox News shows, you're in a pretty good place from a rating standpoint in terms of cable television, even if the bar has lowered significantly over for the WWE with Raw and SmackDown over the past 10, 15 years. And there's no doubt it clearly has. 
the overall raw performance, the overall raw performance of raw and SmackDown in terms of ratings compared to competition, non NFL related is still really, really strong. And you do have the WWE touting again, there's that secret word uh, touting the increase in the number of advertisers that are being brought into the fold and a lot of different things increases in terms of their digital distribution and da 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 da. So the WWE is painting a very rosy financial picture. And here's what I'll say. If you want to believe that, that's fine. But it's just not entirely factually accurate. Or more so, it does not provide full, proper, and complete context in terms of the WWE's reality from a financial standpoint. And it's not a surprise when talking about this company. The way they are reporting things is intentionally structured in a way where they can basically report wherever the hell they want, to a large degree, however the hell they want, and make their numbers look however they make their numbers look. And that will always, for a business, be to its benefit. It's like a legalized version of cooking the books is what it really is. And don't get me wrong, this is an epidemic throughout Wall Street. You know, when you hear smarter people talking about uh, bubbles and the bubbles are getting ready to burst, you look at the current stock market now and continuing to hit record highs and at these huge numbers, that's due to a variety of factors, fundamental health of the economy, even if people don't want to credit him for it, under Obama, got better during the course of his eight years, and you are still really in the last year of a true Obama economy, so Trump's policies, one way or another, have not even kicked in. This is not a political statement, it is just a more factually based economic statement, is those policies haven't even really kicked in. But some of that increase and explosion in the markets post the 2016 election came because um, the market in general has a much more positive attitude about things because they're looking at it and they're seeing the potential for some type of Trump tax cut to come through the fold that will slash corporate tax rates. And believe me, that's not about hiring more workers and fundamental strength of the company. That is about companies and big corporations in particular on the markets that already have trillions of dollars of cash on hand that will now, with a significantly reduced tax rate, let's say if you even went to 20% as a statutory rate, let alone 15%, what that's going to mean is these companies have even more money on hand, which could potentially lead to a larger earnings per share, that could lead to a larger dividend payout. That's what the stock market wants to see. Now, ultimately, if that tax plan does not go through, or does not go through to the level of what they think, then you're going to see some automatic correction because there is a massive bubble there. And we've seen those bubbles there. The mid 2000s, you had a bubble. The late 90s, people talk about the dot com bubble, but there were other bubbles there too. The housing market was a bubble. You know, things just explode and they get out of control because the market can't handle itself. And what the WWE is doing lines up with what most everybody does in the marketplace. And one of the tricks that they use is called non-GAAP, which is non-generally accepted accounting practices. And if you actually read the entire uh, financial report at corporate.wwe.com, you will see in the uh, footnotes when they make the little tick marks there for one, two, three, four, and you go down and you read the fine print, if you will, the financial print, it explains that these are non-generally accepted accounting practices, meaning that the WWE, in large part, is reporting whatever they want to report to make their financial situation look however they want to make it look. And even once the SEC dropped Regulation G in 2003 to kind of curtail this a little bit to try and prevent some bubbles and say, hey, in terms of you companies, most of you that are reporting using non-GAAP and not using the generally accepted accounting practices uh, to report your earnings and your income, your expenses, all of that, um, you've got to have some type of factual basis to basis off this. So you have to have some type of information you can put out there that gives you some type of comparable baseline. And while the intention was good and the idea was good, uh, the implementation, the execution of it wasn't very good. And you can go and look at other companies outside of just WWE. And like I said, WWE, as much as anything else, is a victim of the market that they are in. 
Um, but the fact is, is a lot of companies are vastly over-reporting their earnings by using these non-generally accepted accounting practices. You can take out things, and I'll give you an, a, a rich athlete's example. Look at somebody like Allen Iverson, just throwing out a name here, somebody that we know to not have a lot of money now. So let's say Allen Iverson during his career, I don't know what the exact figure is, but just to give you a spitball number, let's say throughout his career between contracts and shoe deals and, and other endorsements, made about $150 million. You look at that and you say that dude should absolutely be set for life. And if he sat there and told you that, hey, my current income or my current cash on hand is $80 million, you're going to sit there and say, oh my God, he still has half of his fortune left. His financial picture is outstanding. So when he comes to me asking for money to buy shares or to loan money from whatever the case might be, I'm going to be very likely to do that because he's telling me he has $80 million in the bank. That's a pretty strong amount of collateral. What he fails to tell you is that he's got all these houses, He's got all these cars, all these other properties, all these other businesses that he's invested in that he's going under on, and he has to continue to suck money in. And what you end up not realizing is that he's about $70 million in the hole. And these are not exact figures. It's just kind of a scenario to help paint the picture. If I tell you that I made 250000 a year, and believe me, I most certainly do not, nowhere close. But if I told you I made two hundred fifty k a year, you're going to look at me and say, I'm part of the 1% or close to it. And you would, in theory, be correct. But you would automatically assume I was rich. However, if I had a mortgage where I was paying 6000 a month, I had three or four cars, I maybe had a second property, I had child support, I had to pay for this and I had to pay for that. I'm out the rear in terms of student loan debt and credit card debt and what have you. All of a sudden you realize that with that $250,000 per year income, my total realized actualized debt could be up to a million dollars. All of a sudden the financial picture doesn't look so good. So I can tell you I make, and you'll see this with people, celebrities, famous people talk about how much money they make. You could classify that as non-gap reporting. <laughs> They're not giving you all the information. They're not reporting everything. They can pick and choose what they leave out for whatever justification they want to make themselves look better. So the next time you hear somebody some brag about how much money they make, ask them how much money they spend and how much of that is actual true net income. And then you've got the WWE reporting diluted earnings per share, which is pretty standard with a lot of bigger corporations now you're seeing more and more do it it's really a conservative measure of uh, your stock price when you talk about diluted earnings per share that's not just talking about the common stock that's out there for the average Joe like you or I to buy in the marketplace that's including stock options and other things that typically go uh, to employees specifically to high-ranking executives but you can use that diluted earnings per share to bring down the actual earnings per share but more specifically distract away from that real earnings per share, especially if you don't feel like that real earnings per share is all that great. And what these numbers ultimately do is, like I've talked about, is they cook the books. You can sit there and buy into and believe that this company's net income is up $10 million compared to third quarter 2016. Their operating income is up $15 million compared to third quarter 2016. Their adjusted OIBDA is up $16 million almost compared to third quarter 2016. But if you're not reporting A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, you get the freaking point. How accurate and real are those numbers actually? And to those of you that say, I would just be using it to hate and I don't on the company and I don't know what I'm talking about. My counter to you would be this. If the WWE's financial house was really truly that great, if the WWE's financial picture was that awesome, why would they feel the need to use non-gap reporting? Why wouldn't they just use generally accepted accounting practices to report their earnings? And while maybe the earnings wouldn't look as spectacular as they do in this particular case because in this case like I've mentioned you're just basically picking and choosing and deciding whatever the hell you want to report to a certain degree you would have a real actualized picture to where if they said their net income was up two million dollars compared to ten million dollars 
you would say, well, that's not a massive number, but they're actually truly reporting everything and they still have a net income of that. Their operating income, maybe instead of 15 million, would be three or four million dollars. They still are making profit and they are truly reporting everything. And typically you don't report everything. If you've got some mice in the house and you've got some issues you're trying to hide in a legal sense, this is basically a form to me, my opinion, my opinion alone of legalized stock fraud is what it really shakes out to me is a way to artificially kind of cook your books to make things better and look better when you report to your shareholders with your quarterly earnings reports and your year end earnings reports than what they actually are. And a lot of big corporations, just like the WWE, have gradually shifted to these non-GAAP standards of reporting. So you have to be really, really careful to buy into and believe in these numbers. Just because somebody tells you they have a bunch of money doesn't mean they have a bunch of money. And if somebody came up to you and they said, hey, I'm worth, I have $200,000 uh, in the bank or I'm worth $200,000 and they come to you and ask to borrow $50,000, you're probably going to want to know all the particulars and the details of where that $200,000 is or if that $200,000 is a real net figure or it is a gross figure not factoring in expenses, depreciation, amortization, or anything else. So for those of you that listen to the Meltzer Cucks of the world and read the other dirt sheets and they're pumping up how great these financial numbers are, understand that when in a lot of cases wrestling fans start talking about the financials of WWE and wrestling in general they honestly show how little they understand these things and matters and how much they allow their fandom their markdom to get in the way of their better judgment so I propose this question if WWE was so financially sound in the house why do they continue to use these non-gap reporting procedures Furthermore, if WWE's financial house is so sound, how does that wash, even if you're talking about brand splits and running more shows, when you have a lot of these houses are half empty? And you'll see have those that will sit there and say it has a lot to do with the company continuing to cut cost and kind of wipe out expenses. And that's fine to a degree. But you also get to a point where you get a diminishing return because there are only so many expenses you can cut to where you get really bare bones as an operation. And you will eventually not be able to cut or when you do cut, you will cut so severely and significantly that you will run into significant problems. So believe these numbers are great if you want. And on the surface, they look great. And that's not to say necessarily that WWE's current financial picture is terrible. Just understand this, the WWE, as is so often the case, just look at the way they report their social media interactions and their video viewership and so on and so forth, and the way they cook those numbers and present those numbers to look a whole lot better than they really actually are. They're doing the same thing here. They're implementing their social media strategy of over-exaggeration to their bottom line financial picture. Believe they're great if they want you want, but the reality is, it's not that rosy and when you get to that point come next year especially if the WWE for the second straight time like they did a few years ago on the heels of the WWE Network release where they frankly have still underperformed with the WWE Network and that really impacted the increase that they got in their television deal with NBC Universal what do you think is going to happen next year if the ratings continue to slowly decline a little bit I'm just saying they're not going to get maybe what they think. They're even going to put a real ex expectation out there and they're going to under deliver to it kind of like what they did with the last television deal and the stock price, which as we spit right now is a little bit over $26 a share is going to drop quite a bit because people are going to be like, what the hell? When you look at the WWE every quarter, when they report their financial numbers, the first question you should ask yourself is what the hell? And the second question is, you should ask is what's the real deal with WWE's financial picture because I promise you Vince Barrios they're not giving it to you straight <laughs>